Hey there! Today I would like to talk about ink, and not about one specific color of ink as I have been doing in my previous videos, I want to talk today about mixing inks. Now, mixing inks is something that a lot of people do, and if you do so with a little bit of care, you can create colors that are not commercially available, that you really like, and, and that's of course an interesting thing to do, right? So you have different types of bottle ink, you throw some inks together, and then you get an interesting color. Now you have to be a little careful with that, because specific inks, such as uh, Noodler's Base State Blue, cannot be mixed with other inks because of their chemical structure. And if you mix the wrong stuff, then you can actually clog a fountain pen, which is a bad thing. But now, we have platinum mix-free inks. And those are inks specifically made to be mixed, so that should be safe. And until a short while ago, I didn't own these inks because I thought, well, mixing is that is that actually something I would like to do. And then a friend of mine sent me some sample vials of the mix-free inks, and I have tried to create a green ink just to start with something, and I was immediately hooked. This is a lot of fun. You, you put together different colors, you shake them around a little, and you get a, a green. And that's a lot of fun, but in order to do so effectively, you have to know a little bit about color theory. And color theory is something I would like to talk about today. And I'll try to keep it simple, and I'll try to keep it short, and I'll give you a demonstration, so to make it a bit more you know, active and practical. Um, but I do think this could be very useful. Even if you don't want to mix inks, just to understand what happens when you write ink on a paper, and why you perceive it as violet or whatever, I think could be a useful thing. Now, this is a complex matter, and I'm not an absolute expert, but I'll, I'll do my best. And I understand completely that this is a video that may not be, may not hold appeal to everyone. And if you want to uh, stop watching, <laughs> I won't be offended. Okay, for those of you who are interested, let's first ask ourselves, what is light? Well, light, extremely simplified, is visible electromagnetic radiation. It falls within a specific uh, wavelength, a, a spectrum of wavelengths. And if, if those wavelengths are roughly about 380 to 740 nanometers, then we can perceive it. We can see that light. And then, just think of the whole spectrum of colors as different wavelengths. So it starts out with red, and it moves all the way to violet. And all of these colors have specific wavelengths. So to give you an example, I have to read this, I don't know this by heart. Red has a wavelength of about 700 to 635 nanometers. And if you go all the way to the other end of the spectrum, you end up with violet, which is 450 to 400 nanometers. And we can see that. Anything in between, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, we can see. But if you pass beyond that spectrum, to the you know, pass beyond the outer borders, you see colors. Yeah, see is the right word here. You get colors you cannot see. Infrared and ultraviolet. And some animals, and some insects, like bees, if I remember correctly, can see ultraviolet light, which is useful to them, because flowers reflect a lot of ultraviolet light. So, that is interesting, right? So each color is just a different band in the spectrum of wavelengths we can see. Now, how do we see? Well, in our eyes, we have three different types of cone cells. And these three, each type of these three types is sensitive to a specific, let's say, wavelength of the light. So, one type is sensitive mostly to blue, one other, another type is sensitive mostly to green light, and the final um, um, the cone cell is sensitive mostly to red uh, light, so the, the colors in the red end of the frequency, of the, 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 the wavelengths, I mean. Okay. So you can imagine that if you see a blue object, then the majority of cone cells in your eyes that are active, that are active and that will, you know, signal, are the, the blue cone cells. That is, I think, at a conceptual level, fairly easy to comprehend. It's a bit of a simplification, but I, I'm not, I'm, a, I'm neither a biologist nor a physicist. I don't want to enter into all of that stuff here. But I, I think you can picture something like that happens. And then, of course, uh, through your, your ganglion cells, this goes into your brain, your brain processes it, you know, you start to perceive things instead of just seeing them. But that's a completely different story. Let's, let's forget about that for now. 
So we have the, the different wavelengths, they form different colors, you can perceive them through the cells, the cone cells in your eyes. And because we have three uh, different types of cones, humans are what is called trichromatic, right? We generally have three basic colors we can perceive, and we can mix them together to create different colors. Now the big question is how do we mix these different colors? Well, there are two theories on that, two, two uh, methods. One is the additive method, and one is the subtractive method. The subtractive method is used by artists, and that is what we are going to do in the demonstration I'll give later on. But let's first have a look at the additive method. Well, both methods take three colors, because our eyes are trichromatic, and use those three colors in different mixtures to create other colors. The three colors you start out with are called primary colors. And if you mix them together in equal amounts, so two primary colors mixed in equal amount will create a secondary color. And all three primary colors together will create a tertiary color. Okay, let's have a look at the additive method first. The additive method is used in computer screens and in television sets. And what happens there is that different types of light, different colors of light, are mixed, are added. And by adding them, you get different colors. So you have the three primary colors of light, and added together in different, you know, uh, uh, in orders and, and, and you know, forms, you'll get secondary colors. So to give you an idea, the three primary colors used in the additive method are RGB, red, green, and blue. If you put together red and blue, you get magenta, which is a type of violet. If you put together blue and green, you get cyan, which is a very light blue. And if you put together red and green, you get yellow. That's a little bit difficult and a bit counterintuitive. That's what you get. Now, if you mix all of those light sources together, then you get white light. And that actually makes sense. Let's think about the rainbow for a moment. For a moment. What is the rainbow? The rainbow is white light emitted by the sun which passes through raindrops and is thereby refracted. So you have the white light and you break it up. So you can see the entire spectrum, as I just told you, which ranges from red to violet. And you can see all those colors in the different, you know, the different wavelengths. You can just see them. But if you would reverse that process, if you would project all of those frequencies, uh, all of those wavelengths, one over the other, then you get white light again. And that's what happens in the additive method. Now let's take a look at, look at this the other way around. What would happen if you would add no light at all? If you would not project any light? I mean, think about your TV screen if it's off. What color is it? It's very dark gray. It's black. Because there is no light at all. So no, that's black. I hope that's useful. So keep that in mind. This is the additive method. Now we have the subtractive method. And the subtractive method is used mostly by artists. If you're mixing paint or pigment or dye or ink, you can use that method. It's more logical to use that method when you're mixing uh, inks. Why is that? Because the additive method assumes you're working with light. And ink is not a light, right? So, the subtractive method assumes that you have white light that is reflected from a surface, for example paper, and you filter that light. You filter out specific frequencies. You subtract those wavelengths and then you see a specific color. So, I mean, think of a, 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 a camera lens and you put a brightly colored filter in front of that. Then you subtract that color, right? Because that color can no longer pass. If you have a blue filter and blue light passing through it, it's, it's, it doesn't work that way. So, what, exa what, what happens is that you once more take three primary colors and um, what you do is you put them together and by putting them together you filter out more and more of the visible spectrum of wavelengths. So to give you an idea in this method, people use three primary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. So cyan is a light blue, magenta is a violet, and yellow is yellow. If you mix them together, 
you will get red, green, and blue, which is the stuff you had in the additive method. So if you want to create red, you use magenta and yellow. If you want to create green, you use blue and yellow. And if you want to... Um, yeah, sorry, so green... Uh, sorry, green is, is not blue and yellow, it's cyan and yellow. And if you want to create uh, blue, you use cyan and magenta. So, these three together, imagine what would happen if you, put, if you would put all of them together. Then you absorb the entire visible spectrum and you end up with black. Because each color you add filters out a bit more of the visible spectrum and you end up with black because there is no light left to reflect. On the other hand, if you don't apply any filters, that is no inks, you will end up with white light. It's just white paper. Because you don't apply any filters and the, the, the white light that enters the paper is reflected unaltered. So these are two methods to have a look at colors. Now, just to, uh, I just want to explain it first and then I'll show you. So if you look at the, additi the additive method, uh, my camera is, yes, it's picking it up. So this is the additive method. You have three primary colors. You have blue, you have green, and you have red. And if you put them together, if you add red and blue, you get magenta. This is not magenta, but I didn't have a magenta pencil, sorry. If you put together green and blue, you get cyan. And if you put together green and red, you get yellow. If you put them all together, you get white. And if you put none of them together, then you get black, because there is nothing going on. On the other hand, if you use the subtractive method, you have three primary colors, cyan, yellow, and magenta. Again, this is not magenta. If you put together cyan and magenta, you get blue. Put together cyan and yellow, you get green. Put together yellow and magenta, and you get red. If you put all of them together, you filter out the entire visible spectrum, you end up with key. That is black. And if you don't filter out anything, you end up with pure white. Okay. This is complex stuff, and I hope this is uh, slightly clear. What I'll do next is I'll use these mixed free inks to, to use the subtractive method, and I'll show you how to uh, get secondary colors from primary colors, and how to get a tertiary colors from all three primary colors together. And that's it. I'm not a physicist, I'm not a biologist, so I hope I didn't make any mistakes in explaining this. I hope you just understand this on a conceptual level, and that's all there's to it. So, I'll give you the demonstration next, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye! Okay, let's have a look at the subtractive color theory. Uh, just to, to give you an idea, This is cyan, so that's a very light blue. This is magenta, so that's a fuchsia-like violet. And yellow, I'm sure you, you know, so that's yellow. Now, if you mix these together, if you mix cyan and magenta, you get blue. If you mix cyan and yellow, then you get green. And if you mix magenta and yellow, you get red. So these would be primary colors, these would be secondary colors, and if you put all three primary colors together, you get key, which is black. Um, I'll, I'll try to do this. This will be very difficult to do. And these, well, depends a little on how well I can mix it and how fast I can do so before it all dries up. I'll give it my best shot. If you put together cyan and magenta, you get blue. As you can see in the middle here, where the colors have really mixed, you get blue. If you put together cyan and yellow, what you get is green. And if you put together magenta and yellow,
what you get is red. Now, you see this is a bit orange, but here in the center you have a, a warm red. Okay, now, what you, of course, what you're waiting to see is for me to create black from these three colors. Well, that's very difficult. It's probably going to look gray. That depends on how well you can mix the amount of ink, but I'll do my best. So, we've got our cyan. We've got our yellow. And here we have our magenta. Okay. So, what you can see now is that in the very center of what I've just mixed, you see a very dark color. Now, this could probably do with a little bit more of yellow, I think. It's difficult to do this because, of course, the inks will dry, uh, and then you, you will end up with um, a, a weird mix that's not fully you know mixed as well as I would like. But in any case, what you do see is a very dark color that even surpasses the blue we have created here. It's a very dark gray. Now, you can imagine, I'm sure, that if you do this really well, you could end up with a very, very dark gray, which is black in, in you know, appearance. So there we have it, with three colors, three primary colors, you can create three secondary colors, and if you put together all three primary colors, you get a tertiary color, which is fairly ugly. So with this, if you keep this in mind, you can experiment. You can experiment with colors. If you add more blue and less magenta, you will get a different shade of blue. It will be probably darker blue, right? Because did I just say blue? I meant cyan. If you put together more cyan and a little bit of magenta, you will get a blue that is probably a bit bluer because, you know, blue the, the cyan is really overrepresented. So you can experiment with this. That's actually quite fun. So you know, it's quite fun to do. So, you know, I would say try and get some of these inks, the, the mix free inks, they're very nice. And and just, you know, have a go at it. I hope this was useful. I hope my explanation was clear and um I'll talk to you later.